radical love, something we've been talking about recently. May this worship experience also inspire you and set you on fire to transform the world in peace and grace. Today is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. It's also Communion Sunday, so we are glad that you are here for Communion Sunday. Due to COVID, in-house worship will go virtual after today. That means we will no longer have in-person worship, just temporarily, we're hoping. Uh, the Sunday School will continue, and our outreach food pantry will continue. It will be done outside. You may also begin to submit your anniversary offerings in addition to your regular tithes and offerings, and we still are figuring out what are we going to do for our church anniversary. But at this time, we are glad that you are here. If you do need to be tested for COVID, I noticed that the fairgrounds have opened back up uh, for folks to get tested again. So we are still going 360 degrees, it seems, with this. But we'd rather have you safe than sorry. And we'd rather have you blessed to come back when we can really do it right than to put you in harm's way. Although we're taking all safety precautions as we are called to do and want to do. But let us now come to worship together as we enter into the call to worship. We can trust God, for God is like the mountain. God is rock solid. God loves all the people, the poor, the disabled, the outcast, and the stranger. We can depend on God, for God feeds the hungry, heals the sick, and restores relationships. Let us praise our loving God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For yes, God is real. Real in our lives. And real every day of our lives. Let us pray. Generous God, we give thanks to you for your kindness toward us. Thank you for loving us all and calling us your children. Help us, Lord, to recognize our kin and to give our lives to peaceful family relationships with all of creation. Free us from any self-centeredness that we may have and from fear of strangers. Free us, Lord, so that we may meet the Savior in all the broken places of humanity, even in our own. Lord, we pray that you will day by day give us your ongoing blessed assurance in the midst of so much chaos and turmoil. Pray for those that need you the most and the one who thinks they need you the least. But most of all, we give you thanks to be able to worship you right now in spirit and in truth. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen.
Yes. 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 Yes.
These were men who felt an affinity to not only our great nation, but they also felt a Christian responsibility to uphold the God who had made this nation possible. And so we glean from their adamant expectations of putting God in our nation, we can glean the following examples. First, that our mind's eyes need to be fixated on God. No matter what role and responsibility you carry in life, you must fix your eyes on God. I can remember when I lived in Palau that they had a democratic system adopted by the United States and they had a president of the country, but being president of the country did not stop you or prevent you from some traditional roles that were expected of you in the country. You could sign a bill as president on one day and the next day be expected to kill a pig mm. for a traditional event in the evening because that was your family's responsibility to do. And so how even more should we be no matter who we are and where we are to keep our eyes stayed on God. Amen. But when our gaze rests in spirit and in truth that are stayed on God, then we are under his provisional care. All of the care that is providential, provisional, and through his grace, we enter into an everlasting covenant. Right. In other words, he's got our back, yes. and we have his. Amen. Second Corinthians states, your mind is the greatest gift God has given you, and it ought to be devoted entirely to him. You should seek to be bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And in so doing, we would be secured from our enemies. For Oswald Chambers once stated that our minds, when we are obedient with Christ, that this will be one of the greatest assets of the faith when a time of trial comes. Because then your faith and the Spirit of God will work together. <coughs> When you have thoughts and ideas that are worthy of credit to God, learn to compare and associate them with all that happens in nature. From the rising and the setting of the sun, the shining of the moon and the stars, and the changing of the seasons, you will begin to see that your thoughts are from God as well. And your mind will no longer be at the mercy of your impulsive thinking, but will always be used in service to God. Amen. You see, it is when we covenant with God and God covenants with us that we are covered. Amen. God does not break his covenant with us. And so when we keep our eyes stayed on God and we don't enter into a wishy-washy understanding of who God is, when we recognize God as a solid mountain, solid rock in our lives, then secondly, our souls become secure in him. Our souls are secure in the rock. We are not exempt, as Sunday school was talking about this morning, from calamity or danger or the wiles of evil. But our souls will be taken care of by the shepherd who watches over his sheep. When we are fixed our eyes on God and when we enter into that sacred covenant with God, we are secure in God. All right. The wicked may seek to attack us, our property, our freedom, our family names, or anything that may be personal, but they cannot destroy our souls because our souls are guarded by God. Yes. In the office of his multi-million dollar hobby craft business, Hobby Lobby, David Green read the bad news. The bank was ready to foreclose. All the products of the years that he had lived and labored to produce were about to be foreclosed. Right. In 1996, Hobby Lobby wasn't the only business in trouble. The oil business in Oklahoma had gone bust. The overextended banks were failing. Many business owners in Oklahoma City had already closed their doors in defeat and had declared bankruptcy. Although the foreclosure of the business was the worst thing he could imagine, Green came to see it as a defining moment in 
in your spiritual life. I know I prayed prior to that time, he says, but that's when I got really serious about it, he said. He says the space between his desk became his prayer closet. He would crawl under his desk in his corporate office and he would also seek God's help. It was God's response to those prayers for their business that the family believes pulled the company out from under looming bankruptcy and set it on its feet again. Hobby Lobby was projected to produce more than $1.5 billion in sales in the early 2000s and even beyond today. <coughs> and they are still closed on what day? Sunday. 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 Another story I've been following closely, closely is Stuckey's. You all remember Stuckey's? It was a gas station that allowed people of color to actually come in its doors. And you would travel up and down the highway going to Tennessee, Kentucky, found it here in Georgia, the common person farmer. And uh, Stuckey's was everywhere. They were known for their odd sales that they would sell, like little alligator clacking things or their pecan rolls or all mm -hmm. types of food items. And then they sort of went away. But the daughter of Stuckey's is revitalizing Stuckey's right now. And it's been incredible to watch her journey because she's using all the money she has to revive Stuckey's. And she does so because she believes so firmly in the family name, the family goals and visions, and what it represents for those who remember it from days gone by and new customers that will take on the legacy of Stuckey's. But she's walking by faith mm -hmm. and not by sight. Mm -hmm. She's been turned down to put it in certain places, but she's also been accepted in others. Sometimes you have to get in the grunt and the grind of it. But you know that at the end of the day, God has got you when you are in prayer. Mm -hmm. So if in God you really do trust, then we should not be so concerned about the current state of affairs that surround us. Many nations, cultures, and groups have withstood the battlement of sacrifice, of abuse, and of being disenfranchised. And even when it seemed that there was no way out of no way, the faith will never stop praying. Amen. One generation would pass the prayer on to the next for sustenance in the midst of fear, in the midst of suffering, and in the midst of shame. Right now, even in Rome, we have a generational way of acting that has come to bring into our minds what can we do to help this next generation Amen. better understand how to live. For week after week in August, or occasionally there have been brawls downtown on Broad Street. And now we're developing a task force. We had a town hall meeting this past week. John and I attended. These kids have nothing to do, no place to go. Yeah. We are a vessel on Broad Street. We've got to get active with what it means to be God's hands and feet in a community that needs it most. It may mean that Metropolitan looks different. It may mean Metropolitan stays the same. But there is a huge need because police officers can't do it all. Commissioners and educators can't do it all. It takes a full village to mm -hmm. raise our children and our generations. Mm -hmm. And if you see the video, you will just be compelled to want to come up with ways that we can help and to be helpful in ways that may have us take our eyes off of ourselves to focus solely on their needs. But God does answer prayers. Amen. Even when it seems that there is no way out of any way. Amen. Never stop praying. Never stop praying, for God answers prayers. Yes, Keep your eyes on God. Be secure in the unseen because of your trust in God. Let us pray more 
Let us seek to lie, live lives that are holy and acceptable in the sight of God. And may the peace of the Lord fall upon not only us, but upon our enemies as well. For as Isaiah shares, you will keep him in perfect peace, right. whose right. mind right. is stayed on you, yes. because he trusts in you. In God we trust, and we lean not on our own understanding. Let us secure our souls as we place our faith in him. For as an unknown author once said, you can tell the size of your God by looking at the size of your worry list. The longer your list, the smaller your God. So let us make God big in our lives today by putting our faith in him completely. For after all, it isn't about an earthly thing which is temporal, but a soul-saving thing which is eternal. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Just God, you are even handed in your justice. And in the day of judgment, will not play favorites. We confess that we are not so fair in our dealings. We are often unduly impressed by the powerful and by the clever. Do not condemn the powerless and the arrogant and the ignorant. Forgive the partiality and the neglect of people. Help us to become advocates and friends for those who are called sinners. For we are all sinners and fall short of the Lord. Help us to trust in you, O Lord. to the open table for all who love him and seek to grow into his likeness are welcome let us draw near with faith with trust as we continuously make our humble confession and prepare to receive this holy sacrament lord we do not presume to come to this your table merciful lord trusting in our own goodness but we do trust in your unfailing mercies. We are not worthy that you should receive us, but give us your word and we shall be healed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we give you these thanks. Hear the good news, that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That is proof of God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, each of us are forgiven. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to the Lord God Almighty, who is the creator of heaven and earth. For the Father Almighty made us in his image to love and to be loved. But when we turn away and our love fail, God's love remains steadfast. Mm -hmm. By the suffering, death, and resurrection of your only Son, Jesus Christ, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death. And make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. All right. All right. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to God Almighty, he gave the bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said to take eat. For this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. Gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these.
peace, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. We constantly offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, Lord, and on these gifts of bread and wine. May them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. For by the Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ, given for each of you, take now and eat. The blood of Christ, given for each of you, take now and drink. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most bountiful God, we give you thanks for the world that you have created, for the gift of life, and for giving yourself to us in Jesus Christ, whose holy life, suffering and death, and glorious resurrection have delivered us from slavery to sin and death. We thank you that in the power of your Holy Spirit, you have fed us this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. For we are your children, and yours is the glory, now and forevermore, through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the church say together, Amen. 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 So as <laughs> normal, we give you thanks, dear God, for honoring us with your holy presence, for your grace and your love and the communion of the Holy Spirit always surrounds us and walks with us. Please remember as you prepare to leave today to think of those who are less fortunate than yourselves. Yes. Continue to let faith be your God, <coughs> to trust the God that is the solid rock of all salvation. We thank you for joining us. Please continue to give to Metropolitan as God instructs you to. We offer Christ to those of you virtually and in person. Always, if you desire to join us in ministry here at Metropolitan, let us know in the comment section or let us know here in the church. And feel free to share the service, too. And now let's prepare for the benediction. <coughs> As you have been fed, go to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, Go to set free the imprisoned. As you have been received, give. As you have heard, proclaim. And may the blessing which you have received from the Creator Christ and Holy Spirit be always with you. So that in your joys and in your sorrows, in your plenty and in your need, in your going out, and in your coming in, may the solid rock that we trust.